Right now, the day's biggest news stories from a Vegas perspective. This is the Vegas Take with Sharp and Shapiro. One, two, three. All right, welcome back. Rolling out hour number two. It is the Vegas Take. Sharp and Shapiro, so glad you could join us. Interesting conversation with Congresswoman Dina Titus. We're going to post that, of course, on our Vegas Take YouTube page. We're, we're, by the way, we are broadcasting live on YouTube if you want to check that out. But we always post all of our segments on our SoundCloud page and Twitter as well. So there's always a lot of great topics to talk about, some interesting topics to talk about with Minister Stretch Sanders, who now joins us in studio. Uh, Stretch, thank you so much for being here as always. How are you? Bless you guys. Power to the people. Thank you for having me. You bet. Always appreciate it. What's when you up, connect. Stretch? So... I want to get to the homeless issue, and why don't we get right to it to start? Because you said you take issue with something Dina Titus said in the last segment. And obviously what we're talking about is a new ordinance that is being put in place by Mayor Carolyn Goodman. I almost said Oscar Goodman there for a second. Yeah. Carolyn Goodman. Uh, whereas if you're homeless and you don't, you, you don't have access to be able to go into one of these shelters, and many of them are full from my understand, you can find one of these people that are homeless up to $1,000. I've never met anyone that's homeless that has $1,000 to their name, and they can go to jail. So tell me where you disagree with Dina Titus because we just sat, had her on last segment. So with all respect, I disagree with Dina Titus because she made a statement saying she believes that the mayor is trying to clean up the city. I disagree. I think that, that even if that may be true, how she's going about it is dead wrong. I believe that good intentions can still offend. I think that Mayor Goodman and the city council are putting things in place that is literally criminalizing the poor. It's literally putting people in poverty in a position that they're going to get locked up. Some may say, okay, well, if they go to jail, they got three meals, they get a shower. Yeah, but they're also putting themselves in a the cage. They're also putting a record on their name. So that's not the solution. And so I think that Everything else Dina Titus said, I, I kind of was listening, but I think the thing that really struck me the most was how she kind of refused to criticize and refused to hold the mayor and the city council accountable. She's in a form of leadership, like the city council. And I think the problem in today's society is that we have an issue with wanting to criticize those in leadership, our counterparts, our peers, our colleagues. If an injustice is taking place, you must speak on that issue. And just because you want to remain and have that relationship, you can still do that. I have no problem against Dina Titus as a person or her position. Same thing with the mayor. It's not personal. Mm -hmm. But when I see people who are on the street who are literally facing jail time, facing misdemeanors, which can eventually become felonies, right? I don't care how you get offended. I don't care where, where feathers I ruffle. I don't care who I irritate or piss off because at the end of the day, we claim that we love humanity and love people of goodwill. You use your voice and your platform to speak on righteousness if it means being blackballed, chastised, or consequences coming your direction. And, and listen, I don't want to say that an opinion doesn't matter when it comes to anyone, but you certainly have a lot of credibility when it comes to this issue. And the reason why I bring this up is because you do a lot to help the hey. homeless. And I want to talk about some of these uh, events that you have coming up. Homes Not Handcuffs, uh, there's a rally that's going to be taking place uh, tomorrow, right, at uh, 8.30 a.m., a press conference. And then the city council meeting starts at 9 a.m. You're going to be there. Uh, you want people to come out and be heard when it comes to this homeless issue. And then you have the fourth annual Thanksgiving with the people, uh, free people's dinner and giveaway. You're going to have some music there. And you're just helping people that are in need. And I think you're doing some great things. So that's why. And again, I'm not trying to say others you know, that have opinions are not valid. I'm just saying that you have a lot of credibility when it comes to this issue because you've actually taken some action to help people. And we appreciate you doing that. You do a lot for this community. Uh, J.D., you wanted to add something to this. Go ahead. Well, I wanted to ask you if you knew how many, and you, Brian, stretch either, or if you know how many jails are actually in Las Vegas. I think I think it's two, right? Yeah, there are several jails in Las Vegas. Obviously, there's not enough room to be able to put every single well, I mean, homeless if, person on the streets there. If, if you drive north on the Strip, let's say six blocks past the Stratosphere, mm -hmm. there is a entire community, a homeless community. Yeah, there's, there's tents everywhere. I mean, there's probably, yep. what, a thousand Maybe, yeah. maybe a thousand homeless mm -hmm. there. How do it, say? Say you go through and you arrest every single one of those people for being homeless. Where do you put them? And and again, if if you put them in jail, I I, I get I get the, the the premise, but isn't there a, a cost associated through the state by having someone in jail on a per day basis? 
I'm not too sure about that. I do believe that this is a scare tactic. Can't get everybody in jail, but there are some who will say, okay, well, I'll just do this or I'll just go in the park opposed to what we are missing is that I speak to those who are without homes and they tell me, Stretch, it's just not safe in a lot of those shelters. And and on the other side of the coin, there's a waiting list. Once you get in, you have to wait another amount of days to get back in. The parks are not safe because the police are harassing them. Mm-hmm. People are harassing them. We have been trained and conditioned to just totally disrespect those who are on, uh, on right. the street. We don't see them as human. That's why we call them homeless. Let me ask you about that. Let me ask you about that. So you've you've said some things that could be considered controversial on this show, right? You've made some statements. I don't agree with everything you've said. I agree with a lot of what you said, but not everything. You've said that you believe the majority of police officers are racist. I don't I don't agree with you when it comes to that. You've made some statements that you believe if you're a white police officer, you should get extra training before working into a community with minorities. I don't agree with you with that statement. So let me ask you this when it comes to the homeless. Do you believe that if they, many of these homeless people were not minorities, that this law or this ordinance that the mayor is putting into place would not be in effect. Do you think the color of one's skin is the reason why homeless people are treated the way they are treated? No. The, the, without homes issue, it's a classism mm-hmm. issue. It's not really based on race. Now, I will say that once the officers get out there and mistreating people, There may be some officers who may start mistreating people, uh, being a little more violent based on race. But typically, in a situation like people all in tents and all on the street, they can care less about all of them because they don't see they don't see anybody for their Mm -hmm. race. They don't see any color. They see somebody who is really a throwaway. You're a bum. You're a hobo. You're homeless, quote unquote. You're derelict. So they don't exactly. So they don't see human life, and that's the problem: is that we do not see those without without homes. As people. So it's easy to say, give them fines. I've been in meetings with those who are in leadership. Who, you, If you had your eyes closed, you would think, or let's say walked in the meeting late and closed your eyes, you would think they were talking about roaches. Okay, but l- listen. But I'm going to use the word infestation. But I'm going to be honest with you. I don't want 100 or 200 or 1,000 or even f- one homeless person sleeping outside my place. Now, am I saddened for them? Do I wish they weren't in that situation? Absolutely. I think every case is different. But am I a bad person or am I a selfish person because I say I don't want homeless people setting up shop right outside of my place of residence? Does that make me a bad person? You're not a bad person, but if you are saying all that and don't have solutions, you are a bad pro- person. The, well, the, I do. The, okay. The old saying goes either you are part of the problem, you're part of the solution. And so, and I believe that if we're going to have criticism, our contribution has to overpower our criticism to the people. Or silence must be our position. Mental illness, drug addiction, substance abuse. To me, that is the majority of the reasons why many of these people are in the situations that they're in. Now, some people well, make some people. Maybe, maybe nationally, but in Las Vegas, you have to consider you know, gambling addiction. Gambling, I think, ga- gambling addiction is, is a large part of that in Las Vegas. But let's look at this. We're quick to say, okay, people are on the street because they want to be there. Or people that got on drugs or they gamble at their home or they smoke crack or they or they did something, it was basically saying it's a choice. My proposal and question to the people is, when are we going to start looking at what causes that? What makes somebody say, hmm, I want to be out here on the street? That's a mental issue. You're not going to like my answer. What makes somebody somebody have to drink and and smoke drugs to cope with pain? So we have to get to the root of the problem. You're not going to like my answer, but I'm going to be honest with you. I think a lot of it is personal decisions that one has made in their life. Yes, you could make the argument that mental illness is not their fault, and I would agree with that. But many, I personally believe many, the majority of homeless people that are out on the streets are there because of personal responsibility and personal decisions that they decided to make. I, per, I really Once again, that. when you say personal, mm-hmm. what causes that person who has a personal choice, Perhaps what puts them in that condition to do that? Perhaps they chose but, alcohol or drugs over their job. But, Perhaps they quit their right, job. Perhaps the, they got fired from their job. That entire mentality is, is a victim mentality. It's just a losing mentality. It's suggesting that, that they don't control their own destiny. No, I'm not saying that. No, but I'm saying when, when you're saying just, that, that something else, some, some outside influence is, is, is causing right. them to, to make those type of decisions. It could be it, construed it's, as an excuse. It's, it's saying that, that yes, they don't, don't have the ability so. to make their own I decisions. Think, I think that it's something called compassion and empathy, and you understand that people have all had stories and been in positions 
that unfortunately have turned them into things that's lower than themselves. Some of those people, I agree with you. But what would you say to All somebody? Of them. Okay, but what would you say to someone that keeps getting another chance and another chance, doesn't decide to get help, decides that methamphetamines is more important to them than getting a job, or decides, no, I don't want a nine dollar or an eight dollar an hour job. I want to continue to live on the streets. I want to continue to get free handouts. In no way, shape, or form am I saying all of these homeless people are like that. But you have to admit, there are some circumstances where people do not want to work, and they would rather do drugs and drink than to actually be a member of society, a working member of society. What do we do with people like that? Because I can tell you right now, I've seen it. There are people that refuse to get help. There are people that would rather live their lifestyle of drugs and alcohol than actually work for a living and get a job. Dr. King said, whatever, he quoted Victor Hugo, he said, whatever darkness is, crimes will be committed. I believe that can be the same thing applied to what comes with those who are saying, I'd rather give up my life. I'd rather give up my job and be on the street. I'd rather stay on drugs. Darkness was put on them for them to speak that type of death out of their mouth. Who, what, how has that darkness been created? So, yes, I agree. There has to be personal accountability. Mm-hmm. But the Bible says, as a man think of, so is he. So when you think something, you, 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 you behave it. You do it. When we think bad thoughts, what has caused that mindset? What's caused that mentality? When women are on the street having their cycle on the street, mm-hmm. you think you're not going to develop some mental health issues? I talked to women who said they've been raped on the street. Mm-hmm. So when you're in another room or in a tent and you're somebody being raped, how does that affect your psyche? And so at the end of the day, there are so many issues that create. If you don't have mental health issues, when you get on that street, you will. Just like people who go to prison and they're in solitary confinement for two, three months. They come out talking to themselves. So we have to understand that these conditions are creating those to accept being on the street. A lot of our people on the street, 72% in Las Vegas are veterans. That's they very go to sad. war and they see things and, and they don't get the right treatment. And so they're on the street. That needs so to be we addressed. Ha- so we yeah. have to address that for every action, there's a reaction. I don't, I don't, I don't disagree with you there. And that's very sad. There was one specific president in the last decade who, who was very, very not helpful towards veterans for, of the United States military. And it was Barack Obama. Well, I'm not going to blame Barack Obama for the homeless crisis in this country. I think there's blame to go around to a lot of different people. I blame, uh, the, hum- I blame the human family. I blame all of us. I think that... We have to, and I can't just put it on, on Mayor Carolyn Goodman because if if you take Mayor Goodman and the city council out and put another group in, they may do the same thing. It's a mentality that we all have, and that mentality is we do not see the value in somebody who's on the street. Once they're on the street, they're not black. They're not Native American. They're yeah. not Hispanic. They're not a man. They're not a woman. They're a homeless person, and the word homeless in itself is an attack on the people because what it does is it strips you. And if a person's throwing rocks at the building, we're going to say, there's a homeless person outside. They don't have a oh, gender or well, race. Well, you, you could say Gypsy, Jezebel, Vangrant, Derelict. Thomas, there's a lot of there's, different. I mean, there's so many words you could use There's for a lot it. of different what, words. What, what word would you use? But we all forget. Well, I, I, if I have to, I use people without homes, people understand who I'm talking about. But in regular conversation, I say a person, a brother. May, I may say less fortunate depending on the event I'm doing, but I try not to use terms that's putting labels on them. And I Because understand we don't that. respect homeless. We don't respect them. If a man comes in here right now. People that need some help. Thank you. If People a man, that need some help. If a man comes in right now who's quote unquote homeless, we're not going to want to shake his hand. We're not going to want to hug him. We're going right. to treat him like he's a bug or a roach. Mm-hmm. When I go out there and serve people who are without homes, I hug on them. I love on them because I believe that we all have hit hard times. Even those who say, who told me, stretch you, this is my end all be all. I know they're only saying that because they've lost hope. They're only saying that because darkness is on them. They're only saying that because their minds have been reversed inside out. Let me just give out the number real quick. Uh, we're joined by uh, the minister, Stretch Sanders, and uh, now's a good time if you want to call in, if you have a comment or question in regards to this. Let's give us a call right here, 702-257-5396. Again, the number to call if you want to be a part of this conversation, that would be 257-5396. Do you honestly... I'm looking you square in the eyes right now. Do you honestly wash your hands after you have those type of engagements? Yes, but I wash my hands because that's just... I don't think we should attack the, him for that. No, no, no I'm, I'm yeah. absolutely yes, not. I, wash, I would do this. I would take also, a shower. I, I would, but I also I would, wash my so hands. Would I. But I also wash my hands on folks who look clean. Everybody that's clean ain't clean. Everybody that dresses good, that's why I treat everybody the same. Right. It's people who can look good, they don't even shower. Mm-hmm. So I treat everybody the same. Of course, for health safety reasons, somebody who's on the street... Yes, I do have to be a little more conscious of that, but I'm never going to make them feel bad because I believe that when you give somebody genuine love and teach them who they are and what they are, 
they can rise at that condition. Majority of people who are in poverty have lost hope. Right. And so, therefore, they're not making smart choices because they have just accepted the conditions that are around them. So we have to teach, brother, you better than this, opposed to saying, I'm not going to give you money. I'll give you food because you may buy drugs. No, figure out why they're doing drugs. Sure. Why do you have to get high? I've never smoked weed or drank in my life. And this is when I was a, in my former self mm -hmm. because I was always on a natural high. So let's tap into their greatness and figure out why do you think you need to cope with pain? Was you molested? Let's get some therapy. Was you abused? So these people are hurting. We are hurting. Well, and we need to be treated properly. We're going to talk to somebody uh, right now who just called in. Uh, he lost his job, and, and he was homeless for a while. Number to call, by the way, 257-5396. Mike, one, uh, thanks for calling in. Why don't you tell us your story? What's up, Mike? Hey, how's it going, guys? Uh, real quick in a nutshell, uh, I take issue really big time with, uh, with these politicians who always throw in our Catholic charities. I, uh, I moved out to Vegas like 12 years ago, and I went to work for Steve Wynn at his two nightclubs. I don't know if you guys were familiar with the clubs. Absolutely. Yep. All right. I had a very good job. I was making a lot of money, very good tips, and this went on for 10 years, okay? I was never homeless in my life. I always did the right thing. I always had a roof over my head. And what happened was after the 10th year of working at the Wynn, uh, I was approached by a, a new supervisor there that told me I had to share my tips with other workers in the nightclub. And for 10 years, it's all about customer service. You guys know this. You're from Vegas. Steve Wynn, everything was customer service. So if you, if you, if you, if you did good customer service with the patrons, you got good tips. If the other guys did a lousy job, that was on them, correct? Correct. Okay, so the bottom line was I was approached, and I refused to sign a document that I was going to share my tips with the other people. And the bottom line was, it's a long story, but the bottom line was I wanted the blues in my job. I went to the culinary, I was in the culinary union, I lost my job, and... How long were you on the streets? What happened? How long were you on the streets? How long were you homeless? I if... am on the street right now. You but are homeless me... right now. Oh, my goodness. As of right now, I'm homeless. And what happened was uh, about a year ago... Uh, I just, uh, I went into a spiral. And, uh, you know, it's not only drugs. I don't do drugs. I never did drugs. I'm not a big drinker. My problem was gambling, okay? I'm a, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a pretty, you know, a degenerate gambler. And what happened was I lost everything I owned, everything. I lost everything. One day I woke up, and I had nowhere to go. So you know what? My, my next move was I started, uh, I'm from back east. I'm from New York. I was uh, asking friends, Western Union me money, Western Union me this, that, and I was gambling. The bottom line was one day I had nowhere to go and no money. So you know what they told me? Let's go to this Catholic Charities. Uh, you know, if you look at their website, they got a beautiful website. They take some guy, some poor, poor soul that's homeless. They give him new clothes. They clean him up, and they take a photo op with him. And they, that goes on the website. And that know? doesn't help. It doesn't help you for more than a day. Okay, so let me ask you this, Mike. And by the way, I'm sorry for your situation. I have a two-part question. Right? First of all, where are you living right now? You don't have to give us the exact location, but no, I'm no, no, no. I'm in, I'm sleeping right now in the back of a church on a piece of cardboard that, you know, uh, matter of fact, there's other homeless people, you know, that word homeless, I, I agree with the How do you have a I cell mean, phone? I can't, huh? How do you have a cell phone? How are you listening to our show? Right now, uh, this is a phone that was given to me. Okay, you know, I got you. Somebody. I got you. But, but look, look, the bottom line is I didn't know nothing how to survive out here in the streets. So you know what? There's other people, you know, that have been homeless for years. Mm -hmm. And, you know, th there's another issue. You know, I, I really think, in my personal opinion, a lot of it does have to do with mental uh, mental issues because I say 60% of the people that I've met out in the street, they collect Social Security disability. They're getting checks every month for like 12 1500 bucks, and they choose to be out in the street. It's a, it's a sad issue. But listen, I, before I hang up, Brian, I just want to... No, I got I a question for you, Mike. Go ahead, Mike. Finish your statement real quick. No, I just, I just wanted to get this out. This is my main reason for calling. I went to Catholic Charities, okay? And you talk about a hellhole. I walked up in there my first night, guys. My first night, I laid on a bunk because I tried to get in the shower. And then the people in that shower that were coming off the street, like that, were there for months. They were filthy, stained underwears in the, on, the, yeah. on the floor. There was urine. There was feces. I don't want to get into that, but no. I 
I woke up, I tried to sleep on a bunk, and the next day, I walked out of that place, and my arms looked like I had the measles because I was eating up my bed bugs. Mike, bed I, bugs. I'll tell you, Mike, I, I want to, uh, we're going to take down your information, and I want to continue this conversation with you at another time. I'm really glad that you're listening to us. I'm really glad that you called in. I'm sorry about your situation. But uh, and we have about thirty seconds here. And, and we real quick, break. Mike, I'm going to Mike, I'm going to c- contact you and uh, help you get some resources. And so I'll give you a call today, and we try to get you situated. Okay, good. We're going to take Mike's number down, and uh, Stretch is going to do what he can to help you. I want to discuss that conversation we just had, and we have other people on the line that we're going to talk on the other side of the break. The number seven zero two two five seven five three nine six. Wow, that was powerful stuff. Again, that number to call if you want to be a part of this conversation. Now would be the time to do it. We have a few phone lines that are open. That's seven zero two. Two five seven five three nine six. I promise I will get to all of you on hold on the other side of the break. Also, Michelle Obama making some controversial comments yesterday in regards to African Americans and, uh, well, talking about white people and their thoughts on living with African Americans in society. We'll talk about that coming up next. We're going to continue the homeless topic as well. Again, that number two five seven five three nine six. We're here with the minister, Stretch Sanders. Take a quick break. Be back right after this. You're listening to the Vegas Take. All right, welcome back. It is the Vegas Take. Sharp and Shapiro. Glad you could join us on a Tuesday. Joining us in studio is the minister, Stretch Sanders, talking about racial issues and, of course, the homeless issues facing the country certainly hits home right here in Las Vegas as well. And you're t- we're taking your phone calls, 257-5396. Again, that number is 702-257-5396. Why don't we kick off this segment and go to Randall. Randall, you are next on the Vegas Take Your On with Stretch. What's on your mind? Yeah, thanks. I want to make a connection between two points that are being made um, because I agree with both, and I think they're related. The one that a lot of homeless are there because of the choices they've made. The other that we don't think of them as human. I, I think the, a, a problem I've experienced working with people on the verge of homelessness through my church is some people do want to change, and those are easy people to work with. And there's so much everybody wants to help them, but the people that had things happen to them, or for whatever reason they're homeless by the choices they've made, it takes so much time and effort to change somebody, to get somebody to want to change hours and weeks and months and years, to change kind of who somebody is, to start making better choices, to go get help, to get off the street. Uh, so it's kind of discouraging as a, you know, a, a fellow human to see a homeless person and think, oh, I'd love to help them, but man, that's a huge load. It's, it's, change somebody well randall let's let uh, it's a valid point let's let uh stretch uh respond to that go ahead stretch thank you brother we appreciate your question your statement i think the problem is it's not that people don't necessarily want to change i think that people have accepted the conditions that they're in now i will say this some people you you do have to feed with a long handle spoon and you do have to say you know what I cannot kill myself trying to help no, help this person. Some people are just, I'm not going to say that they can't change, but it's just not their time. You do sure. have to want to change. But can we honestly say we're planting the right seeds to spark change? And locking people up is not a way to go about it. That's not how you spark change. Mm-hmm. Giving out fines is not how you spark change. That's not motivation I for tend nobody. To, I tend to agree with you on that one. 257-5396 is the number to call. Let's go to Nikki. Ne- Nikki, you're next. You're on with Stretch. Go ahead. So I have a question. I have an adopted daughter who has been in and out of uh, mental facilities because she has severe mental problems. And in Nevada, in Las Vegas alone, they've closed all the acute, well, most of the acute facilities for children. How are we going to stop them from ending up on the streets if we don't have any care for the kids? That's a a good point. Uh, Stretch, what do you say to that? So me being somebody who has people in my family who battle with mental health issues, that's another battle we need to tackle. And I think that it all goes back to us actually speaking out. It's cool to call in the radio shows. It's cool to make Facebook and Twitter posts. But are we going to show up to the thousands at these mental health facilities? Are we going to show up by the thousands to these city council meetings like we have one tomorrow at 9 a.m.? We need to show up and demand the city builds more mental health facilities for children and adults. Demand they build more shelters. And so I think that if we don't tackle mental health, then yes, that is going to produce the climate for those who are, are on the street. Nikki, do you agree with that? I'll show up as somebody else. I'm asking for help because I'm at a loss. I don't want my daughter. I have my brother with schizophrenia. Mm-hmm. I don't want my daughter to end up on the streets. It terrifies me. Right. I, and she's actually threatened to kill my 
five-year-old and my wife. Oh, my gosh. And I don't know if she – she could, they're sending her home from – Georgia because she's not doing anything. So Nikki, this is, uh, and I'm sorry, this is your, your, your daughter you're talking about. Yeah, this is my daughter. So let me ask you, let me, Nikki, I'm so sorry you're having to go through this. Uh, Have you called the police and what type of help is your daughter getting out? Because I consider that a very serious situation. She's in a facility in Georgia right now, but because she's not hurting anybody in Georgia at the facility in Georgia, they say that she needs to come home. Well, that, Even though she's making the threat. So you're telling me that your daughter, and I'm sure you take it very seriously, uh, that your mm-hmm. daughter has threatened to kill members of your family. You're telling me she's in a facility that is not in the state of Nevada, and that facility is saying they're going to send her back to your family? See, this is exactly the kind of stuff that I'm talking about. And then we wonder they, why there are so many... Yeah, it's terrible. They won't... Di- they won't. Um, under the age of 12, they won't give them a formal diagnosis other than PTSD. See, and, and then we wonder why that some of these people, you know, commit horrend, horrendous acts. Some of these people need help, and it doesn't, Nikki, and, and thank you, by the way, for your story. I'm sorry you're going through that. I hope your daughter ends up being okay. But then we wonder why some of these people that lose their minds, so to speak, that have mental issues, go into schools and start killing innocent people, go into a Walmart and start killing innocent people. We need to do something about mental illness in this country. And until it is addressed, we are going to get people that are going to be taking lives of of innocent others because they didn't get the help that they needed. When somebody says that they are going to kill a member of their family, and you could hear in this Nikki, this mother's voice, her concern, when somebody says they're going to kill somebody, they need to be evaluated and they need help. Mental health is one of, I would, I, would, I would put it like this. Being without a home on the street, that's the reaction. The action is mental health. The right. action is low living wages. The action is two jobs to make ends meet. Struggling, living in high risk crime areas, being yeah. oppressed. That is what's causing this. So when you have that climate that is built around you, your limitations and opportunities to succeed are very minute. So we have to look at various things. Mental health is a big one, but it's also the fact that people are literally struggling. For most of us, we lose our job and and don't get a, a flow after that. We on the street. Yeah. We all are paycheck away. And so that's why it's so important. And that's why I'm calling on people to come out and join us tomorrow at 8.30 a.m. on the City Hall steps. We're going to have a rally yeah. It's the Homes Not Handcuffs rally, and then we're going to head and have the city sure. council meeting at 9 a.m. All right, so come out and talk about the mental health and the different issues. So, so you, you agree that if you that if you lose your job, that you're that you're likely on the street. And we've had this conversation a, a lot of times about offending someone in the workplace and and losing your job and being on the street. Do you think that that is? I mean, the the parallel there I, to me is very very interesting. Absolutely. If you come from a family, you got folks who moved out here with just themselves. No real support, no real uh, stability. And so they lose their job, or if anything goes wrong, then the bills start piling up, and before you know it, you're on the street. Speaking of losing your job, I want to switch topics here real quickly because uh, we talk about race relations in this country a lot. Uh, Have you heard this story stretch? In Buffalo Wild Wings, two uh, managers were fired uh, because some customers that were not white uh, were sitting at a table and... Some other customers wanted them to, 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 to move tables because of basically their descent, because of the color of their skin. I cannot believe that the managers actually went over, these two managers, and asked them if they could move. So what happens? These two managers are fired, rightfully so. They're complete morons. I can't believe they did that. In fact, if, if I'm a manager of a restaurant and my customer, one of my customers says, I want them to move, why? Why? Are they being loud? Are they being obnoxious? Well, you know what? They don't look like so us. Is it possible? Get lost. Is it possible that these two managers are mentally ill, Brian? I have no idea. Because I don't know how to they, answer they, that question. They just lost their job. Mm-hmm. Assuming they're in a, in a place where rent is high or they don't own a home because they're paycheck to paycheck, as we as we just discussed, they're probably going to be on the street themselves. Do you think that they should be on so the street? What, so you think for, for, so, for, so you so you think for, they should still being, be employed? No, I'm, I'm just saying for, for being mentally ill potentially or, or ignorant to, you, to, to another race. Where do you where do you? I'm saying we're, we're, we're basically talking in circles. No, we're not. If you're, I disagree with you. You're telling me that if you're a manager of a restaurant, well, we're saying that mental illness is a large component of being homeless. And I'm saying these two managers are probably mentally ill to the fact that they're. How about just racist? Can't you just be racist without being mentally ill? That's, come on. What? Uh, do you agree? Yeah, totally. Yeah. Uh, well, okay. Why does it have to be mentally I ill? See your point, JD, but it's a little different. This is a different circumstance. Because that's a that's a that's a very conscious choice, right? That's way you can't. 
it's it's one thing saying, okay, I gamble and I'm a gamble. Uh, I'm addicted to gambling. And I gamble my house away, or I drink, or you can say, okay, those are coping mechanisms. You telling somebody, okay, hey, we got guests who don't want you here. Can you move over? It's nothing really meant to me. That's mentally ill about that. Uh, you definitely have some issues, and I think that they are more stemmed from racism, hatred, bigotry, things like that. It all comes down to choices regardless. These guys made that choice. The, the people we've been discussing for the last mm -hmm. the last hour, they made the choices to either gamble or drink or do drugs and or get involved with prostitutes or whatever Can it just be possible that they're just racist uh, a-holes? Can't that be possible? Why does it have to be an excuse of mental illness? Let me tell you something. If I saw that, if I saw that a manager went up to another table and asked them to move because of their race, I would call them a racist and I would no, immediately I'm, want them I'm, to be fired. I'm, I'm not suggesting that they're not racist. What I'm of saying is, they should, should they have absolutely no wherewithal? What do you and, mean no and, wherewithal? And Nobody said they can't work uh, another job. They're, they're losing their jobs. Their, their names, they can't they're, find another job? Their names are being mentioned in the media. Who's going to want to hire they them again? They deserve it. The, the question is... They're going to be homeless themselves, most likely. That's not true. Well, I disagree with based that. Based on what? First of all, we, you we, we, we've just been discussing. You first of all, you don't know for, that for they, the last for okay, the last thirty here's, minutes. Here's where I completely disagree. About how you. you know, lower wages, higher rent. You don't know that there's a good chance that these two managers so are. So what do you think should happen to them? Then? What's your I'm, point? I'm just, I'm just asking you. It seems like we're helping some people and not helping other people. Okay, mm. so you think we should help people that are racist? Is I'm that say, what you're I'm saying? I'm saying, what do you think? I, I think job security is a big, big deal. Then maybe you shouldn't be a racist. Then. And right now, people are losing their jobs for offending people. I'm not. To feel bad. Excuse but, me. But that's the, not but, offending but, but, somebody. But on the same, that's... but on the same side of things, if you drink and gamble, and again, these are all personal choices can, by, by, by both. By how could by you both compare people. a drinking problem just, to being I'm, a racist? I'm, ask, I'm asking. There, there is a decent chance that these two managers will be homeless within the next month or okay, two months. I, I assume, completely disagree with you. What? First of all, you don't know that they have a drinking problem or a gambling problem or a drug problem. I know, that's I know, number I know one. They don't have a job. Okay, that's number one. No, you don't. They could have another job lined up. You don't know that. Number two. Again, who would And hire number them? three, if you are a racist. I have zero sympathy for you in any way, shape, or form in life. When you go to a table, and make no mistake about it, I'll explain this again and then stretch, I want, and we'll take your phone calls on this, 257-5396. A child was celebrating a birthday party, okay? These were people of color, okay? And some customers asked them to move, and then the managers, instead of acting appropriately, several of them, by the way, went up to the table and asked them to move. They, I don't blame them for saying they didn't want to move. Eventually, they just left the restaurant. I'm glad mm -hmm. they did. I am in complete support of these managers getting fired. I think they are morons. I think they are racist. There is no evidence to support that they are mentally ill. There's a lot of evidence to support that they are racist pigs. Okay, is there racist, is there racism predicated for mental illness, which is just due to ignorance? Is so, that, so, is that, is that so are you saying Donald Trump no, is no, mentally ill? No, what, what I'm saying is that what you're saying. What, what does Donald Trump have to do with this, Brian? Uh, Donald Trump has demonized does, he has, people he has, of color. He has absolutely nothing to do with this conversation. <laughs> it has a right lot now. to do no, with color. You're, you're bringing maybe, in, maybe you're, 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 you're trying to attack the president. Maybe for no, you're onto no something. No, JD, I'm going to go no, with my, you on no, this. You're right. The president's mentally ill. You're right. I agree. Do you think that both of these managers should be homeless, Brian? Because, That's a ridiculous no, question. Because they're racist. We just had the conversation. We said that low living wages, if you don't have a job, there's a good chance you go homeless. Should okay, these I'll guys answer, be homeless I'll answer your question. being racist? I'll answer your question. Is By the, question. the way, there is no evidence to support the fact that they are going to be homeless. There I don't know no where you're getting support, that from. Support, just, because you lose your job, be just because you lose your job doesn't mean automatically you're going to be homeless in a month. So that's ridiculous. But I will answer your question, and I'll be very blunt and okay, honest great, with you. Okay, great. Let's do it. If you are dumb enough to be the manager of a restaurant and hateful enough to go up to a table and ask them to move because of the color of their skin and someone at another table doesn't like them because they don't look like you. If you are dumb enough to do something like that and hateful enough to do something like that, I have no sympathy for you. And if you end up being homeless, in my opinion, you belong there because you made a horrible mistake. Now, with that being said, I don't think that's the case here. I don't okay. think these but, people but, are mentally ill. Well, but, on, but on the other side of things, if you are dumb enough to drink yourself, to drink all your money away, to gamble all your money away, to do drugs. That is substance it, it, abuse. You, that you, is, that you, you may become homeless, but you can you deserve help. You can have help, but but these two people can't because because Let me tell racist. you something. Well, Go ahead. Is, is, is basically what so you're telling I agree. Me. I agree with both of you guys. I think why I agree with Brian is if you, first of all, to, to do something like that, I mean, that... I mean, what are, what are we, in the 60s? Like, that is completely out of whack. So, yeah, should, you definitely should be fired. Unfortunately, we are in the social media generation where stuff happens like that, your names are, are blasted, and it's p people who have done racist stuff, and they have lost their job. I, I do agree, based on what it is. In this situation, yes, they should not be, they're not ready for a restaurant job to be a manager. But I believe in redemption. I believe in second chances. 
I believe I've made mistakes where I've lost jobs over mistakes I made due to me feeling pressured and my back was against the wall. But I still take my I still hold myself accountable, but I still deserve to be to be, you know, to have uh to be forgiven and have redemption. So I believe that if they these these two guys, they deserve to get to get rehired somewhere else. They shouldn't be hired in that company exactly. and they should not be in management. And that is my point. But they definitely yes. should to and get by a the way, chance. It, we is make Im- mistakes. it is important to note that there is no evidence to support the fact that these men that were fired are mentally ill. It, it, let's take some phone calls. What do you think out there? Two five seven five three nine six seven oh two two five seven five three nine six. Let's go to Calvin. Calvin, thanks for calling in. What's on your mind? What's up, Calvin? Calvin. Well, I just want to tell you straight. You you made some good uh arguments there, but these guys, if they're racist, I don't care if they ever work again. I'm sorry. Because if you're going to treat people like that, you have no business in the community doing those type of things. I agree. What if kids are around? And kids see these Kids were around. Like Calvin, that, and Calvin. it's just acceptable. Calvin, I agree with you. By the way, there were kids. Sadly, this was a birthday party family get-together. This is utterly disgusting. I agree with it's you. It's very disgusting because this is, is this example we're going to give our kids? It's okay to be a racist and we'll still employ you? Yeah, I don't feel bad for them at all. Why don't we force them to change their views about being rich to other people and then we employ them? J.D., what do you say to that? I think there should definitely be education, 100%. All right, so you agree with Calvin. Calvin's saying he doesn't mind if they don't work again for the rest of their life. I don't feel sorry for these guys. And, Brother Calvin? I have have not the inkling of sorriness for these people who can treat other people that way. And to be told by somebody else and you go act on it knowing that it's wrong, that's what's wrong with America today. That's right. And when we talk about our mental illness, my uncle was mental ill. The government got him an apartment. He used to walk around pushing a shopping cart, didn't care where he was. If he didn't make it home, he slept on the street. Yeah, but I, he had an apartment. He's mentally ill, but yeah. you need more than that. Point taken, point taken, Kevin, and we appreciate the call. And by the way, the idea that if you are a Klansman or a KKK man, I know, J.D., you're not saying this, but the idea that if you're a Klansman, you must be mentally ill. How, how about you're just a hateful, racist human That's being? Right. There are people like that out there. Two five seven five three nine six. Why don't we go to Steven? Steven, you're next on the Vegas Take. Go ahead. You're on with Stretch. What's up, Steven? Yes, good morning. Uh, good morning, Steven. Brian, J.D., and Stretch. Yes, sir. Uh, Mr. Stretch, I'd like to, well, I'll, I'll meet you there tomorrow morning. Uh, hopefully you'll be there a little early. Maybe we'd have a chance to uh, get acquainted. Um I would like for you to, in the interim, to possibly make a list of all the potential problems, unquote, that you see that uh, would could better this situation. I think we're always in a hurry to blame others. I, I know that people as a, that have varying degrees of addictive personality. I, I hearken to Steve Howe. I mean, he only had seven chances to make seven or ten million dollars a year when seven to ten million dollars a year was a lot of money and he he couldn't do it steven let me ask you a question what do you think about these people in this restaurant that were fired that lost their jobs that asked people to move basically because of the color of their skin what do you say to those people do you think they deserve to be fired i i think that's an owner issue i i wouldn't I wouldn't condone it, and I'd make sure that it never happened again. Mm-hmm. I went into 7-Eleven uh, last July and uh, ran into a little white woman about 72 years old with a, well, a walker. Uh, she she was looked very much dehydrated. She asked me if I could get her some water. I went into 7-Eleven. And I bought the rock star and got some ice for my mug. And I, she'd given me a cup, and I, I, I attempted to fill up the, the cup with ice for her. And there were I don't, four, I don't mean to, I don't, I don't mean four, to rush you, but we black people there. Okay. That, yes, there we and go. And they said I couldn't take ice to the white woman because she'd been barred out of there. It was about 110 degrees that day. Mm-hmm. I mean, racism comes, what I'm showing is racism comes in all colors. I, d- I agree with you, Stephen, and we're not saying that racism doesn't come in all colors. I that don't right. disagree with you. Go ahead, Stretch. This is what it comes down to. I agree with Calvin. I hear Stephen. You need to be held for your, for your actions, period. I'm the first one. If I do something wrong, the consequences I get coming, I can't cry and, oh, my God. After I repent, I ask for redemption, I will hope that I'm able to move forward. People make mistakes. Yeah. But... They should not be in form of management. They should be. They should mm-hmm. definitely be fired because if they stay, what example does that lead? Yeah. But I agree with JD. We have to educate that, and that need to be taught some some education pieces. That brother, a little bit of both. You know, that, but there has that, to be accountability. Day, and, and, and even with education, 
some people just got hatred in their heart, and, and that's the way it's going to be until they're yeah. ready to change. Well, for me personally, I wanted to hear for the next 10 minutes about how he filled up his mug with ice because that was very exciting radio. I, next time he calls in, I hope he shares that story again. That was so exciting. Uh, number to call, 257-5396, 702-257-5396. We'll take some more calls in a second here. Uh, so Michelle Obama made some interesting comments yesterday. She's uh, at a speech, and she said that she believes white flight is still an issue. And if you don't know what white flight is, it's uh, you know people uh, that are white that live in a community that don't want or not comfortable with, I should say, African-Americans living in their community. I call that racism. There's a lot of white people that have been neighbors of mine that I haven't liked very much. I don't care what the color of your skin is. If you're a jerk, if you're a bad neighbor, you're a bad neighbor. So do you agree with Michelle Obama? Because some people are taking issue to what she said. Do you believe white flight is an issue in society right now? I think that white flight is definitely still real. I mean, if you got managers who are still bold enough to pull a 1966 we don't serve N words up in here, then you definitely know that white flight is real and that people have black neighbors and they literally pack up and move. But I also believe that black people, we can't be so concerned with that. Every community has their own neighborhoods. We need to have our own as well. But it doesn't mean that we can't have free will to live where we want to live. But I just don't put too much energy in than in people who are from another community not wanting to be around me. I feel that that's okay. I'm not going to force myself on you. I'll do my own thing. So I think that Black people need to look at this situation as, yeah, white flight is real, but let's also not have a black flight because when we integrate it, which is some beautiful things in a way, we pull black flight, which means we You don't want white people in your community. And we integrate. No, 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 not even that. It's the fact that we were so excited to go to black hotels, to white hotels, we let go black ones. We were so excited to go to white restaurants, we let go black ones. So I think that we got to stop having black flight. You got, you know, black people would criticize white people and say, oh, you know, white people don't want to live around us. You don't want to live around so, us. So do you think she has an issue with Little Italy or Chinatown or the, the, the German community in a lot of major cities across the United States? I would just say that the concern, black people need to focus on the fact that we have black flight. You know, at the end of the day, the, uh, the bombers are different because they're from a different level of, you know, of economics. But there are a lot of black people who succeed and get successful. They don't even walk around the hood. So we want to criticize and talk about, well, there's a white flight, but what about black flight? You well, don't even want to have a business in your own community. I, I don't disagree with that. Let's take a phone call from someone that actually agrees with uh, Michelle Obama. Uh, let's go to Daniela. Daniela, you're on with Stretch. Go ahead. Hello. I lived in my community. I probably moved in five years ago. Um, when I moved in, uh, all my neighbors on my street were white at, at the time. Um, I actually, everybody came in and said hi to me. Uh, one day I was out uh, doing some yard work and a uh, black neighbor of mine came by and he was like, oh, has anybody come and introduce yourself? And I was like, oh, yeah, I met, you know, a couple of people. And he's like, really? Because I've lived here for five years and uh, nobody has ever come to introduce themselves to, to me, to my house. Mm. So this guy lived in a corner house. Everybody drove by it. So it's not like he was hidden from the neighborhood. Right. Um, and then also we had another neighbor who would blatantly post uh, stickers of Obama and impeach Obama, which everybody has their, you know, their their opinion on that. But it was borderline racist to the point where, you know, Obama nation, uh, things about Muslims. And that was, you know, unapolog unapologetically put on their doors. So. Hmm. All right. Well, I'm glad you shared that story. I'm, I'm sorry that you've had to go through some of that stuff. Clearly, it's uh, it's there in society. I don't necessarily disagree with that. I don't think the majority of white people feel that way uh, or African-Americans. Let's go to uh, Chris Wynn, who is a friend of the show. He's calling in. Chris, what do you think about all this? What's yeah, up, what's C. Up? Hey, Brian, I just want to correct you on the, the uh, actual definition of white flight. It's, it's not gentrification. About being, yeah, it's not about people being... Uh, you know, prejudice or pe being racist. White flight is something that took place back in the late 70s or 80s and 90s where where white people have left the inner cities and certain neighborhoods in the inner cities because the, because the neighborhoods were their guests. All right, well, let's ask Chris. Let's ask Stretch. So it's basically the origins of suburbs. Yeah. Stretch, what's your stretch, definition stretch, of white flight? Like stretch, go ahead. So white flight is if you have a white neighborhood or a white community and other communities of color start to move in and overnight, People who are white feel that having people of color are going to bring the property value down. And so to save their homes and to make sure what they think is going to bring down their property values, they pack up and they move to the suburbs. Right. And not, well, white flight wasn't just with the housing. It was with the jobs, the plants. Once black people started getting more hired at the plants and the meat packaging companies, they start closing those down. And now 
we was on the bus. We didn't have access to go to the plants in the suburbs. Those who are white could afford vehicles. So, so, so it's bigger than just somebody moving out of a neighborhood. It was closing down think, jobs. Do you think that gentrification uh, affected generational wealth for African Americans negatively? Great question. I think that gen- gentrification still impacts the black community because they say that our community has no value. Don't want to put any resources to make the community safe for us to live, but then we'll raise up the rent, we'll move us out, come and make condos. Why didn't you just put the resources so we can live and have our own communities? No, they want the property, they want the land, but don't want the people. Mm-hmm. So you can live, you can take my, my grandmother's house, but you can't live next to my grandmother's house. Stretch, I wish we had more time, uh, but uh, we know you have your event tomorrow, and we hope a lot of people show up for that and your Thanksgiving event. You do some great things for the community. Always appreciate it when you come in. We'll catch up with you next week. Thank you so much for being Thank here. Thank you, guys. Power to Thanks people. a lot, Stretch. Always a lively conversation with Stretch. We'll take a quick break. Be back right after this. UNLV basketball. That's right. Game one of the season. The TG Altsburger era starts tonight. We'll break that down. Coming up next, you're listening to The Vegas Take.